In this video, we're going to discuss a theorem that is related to theorem, Thevenin's theorem, and it's called Norton's theorem. As a matter of fact, they're related. They are duals of each other. Edward Norton was an American electrical engineer, worked for Bell Labs in the early 20th century, and this theorem is named after him. And it's it, actually the dual to Thevenin, which was discovered a bit earlier. Norton's theorem states that you can take any circuit, and there's that magical word that's, that gives you a great deal of power, any circuit composed of linear elements and sources. So it can be arbitrarily complicated, but if it's linear elements and sources, then it can be represented by a single current source, and in Norton's case, it's going to be in parallel with a single resistor. And so Norton's theorem says you can take an arbitrary complex circuit network and you can make a single current source in parallel with a single resistor and it will behave exactly the same as the more complex circuit. So in order to get started, let's look at Norton's theorem and it looks just like Thevenin's theorem. And so you take the location or the circuit element of interest and if you want to find the Norton equivalent circuit which you can connect to it to have the same behavior, you need to take your circuit element of interest, remove it, open it, and find VOC. Then take your circuit element of interest, short it out, and find the current that flows there, I short circuit. And then you can simply find the Nor Norton equivalent circuit, which is going to be a single current source, and the current source is going to have a value of I short circuit, and that needs to be placed in parallel with a single resistor whose value is VOC over ISC. So Norton's theorem says there's a single circuit, a single current source in parallel with a, with a single resistor that acts the same as any arbitrary network of linear elements. All right, so let's get started. We're going to look at the same circuits that we did for Thevenin. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to leave the details of the computation back uh, for you to go back and look in Thevenin on the video on Thevenin's theorem. Because if you look at the, go back to our, our recipe, if you notice, we need to find the same two values. We need VOC and we need ISC when we're finding a Norton equivalent circuit. And those are the same two values we need for Thevenin equivalent circuit. So when you're finding a Norton circuit, you're finding a Thevenin circuit, you're really finding the same two values, V open circuit and I short circuit. So the details of getting these values, I'll refer you back to the previous video. But if you recall, uh, just very quickly, if we have the circuit here in the top, and so we have this circuit which is inside of uh, a box, and we don't know what's inside the box, and we're going to connect a resistor R sub L to the outside of it. I would like to figure out what is an equivalent circuit that I can attach to R sub L in order for R sub L to exhibit the same behavior. So in order to find a Norton equivalent circuit, we need to find VOC and we need to find ISC. And so we simply remove R sub L and we look to figure out what voltage VOC gets created at this point. And if you go back and refer to the previous work, we find that VOC uh, ends up being 8 volts. And then we need to find I short circuit. So we take our R sub L resistor, we replace it with a short circuit, and then we want to find the current that flows. That's I short circuit. And again, we can do it a, a variety of ways. And if you go back and look at the previous work, you'll see that 1.6 milliamp flows for I short circuit. So now that we have the two numbers that we need from our recipe, we have our, our V open circuit value. 8 volts and we have the I short circuit value, then we are ready to find our Norton equivalent circuit. Because remember our Norton equivalent circuit says that I Norton, the current source we need, is going to be the same as I short circuit and that's going to be 1.6 milliamps. And then also we need to put that in parallel with an R Norton and R Norton is going to be VOC over ISC and that value in this case equals 5 K ohms. So, if we would like to take the circuit in the box, we can replace all of the circuitry there in the yellow box with the single current source, 1.6 milliamps, and place that in parallel with 5 K ohms, and if we were to do that, then we can simp then R if R sub L were reattached to this circuit, this is R sub L, we would discover, and, and Norton tells us that this R sub L would see the exact same behavior as this R sub L, 
because the two circuits uh, are equivalent. That is, we created a Norton equivalent sor a Norton equivalent circuit to the circuit in the yellow box. So this circuit would behave exactly the same as this circuit when connected to R sub L, which can be any value you would like for it to be. Let's do another example. Uh, again, the details are back over in the Thevenin video, but quickly, uh, if we have a circuit here in the yellow box, and we would like to figure out a Norton equivalent circuit for the circuit inside the yellow box, again, if we're going to do a Norton equivalent circuit, we need to immediately find VOC, and we need ISC. We must find those two values. So we take R sub L, take our R sub L uh, resistor, and remove it, and then we need to look for the open circuit voltage, VOC. And if you refer back to our notes, we saw that VOC is going to be 8 volts. And then we need to find I short circuit, so we take our R sub L value, we short it out, and then we're looking for the current that flows, I short circuit. And if you go back and look at our notes, then we see I short circuit was going to be uh, 8 tenths of a milliamp. And then go back to our recipe. We're looking to make a Norton source. A Norton source is going to have I Norton is going to equal to I short circuit, which is going to be 8 tenths of a milliamp. And the R Norton value we're looking for is VOC over ISC, 8 volts over 8 tenths milliamp. And we will get 10K ohms. So if we take this circuit, which is in the box, we can replace all of that circuitry in the box with this circuit, and those two circuits will behave exactly the same if, if we make this 8 tenths of a milliamp, and we make this resistor 10K ohms, and then for any value of R sub L that you attach, these two circuits will be act the same way electrically. So you can see that Norton's theorem is very much like Thevenin's theorem. They're just actually duals of each other. This circuit, the Norton circuit, is a current source in parallel with the resistor. Again, Thevenin's was a voltage source in series with the resistor. They're just duals of each other, so they're very much related. And you need to find the same two values, V open circuit and I short circuit, in order to find both of them. All right, so that's how you do Norton's. And let's, let's go on to a related topic. And since the Thevenin equivalent circuit and the Norton equivalent circuit are so similar to each other, let's, look, let's take the two uh, the template circuits, the Norton, excuse me, the, the Thevenin equivalent circuit over here. And uh, this is the Thevenin circuit. And then we have the, the Norton circuit on this side. And let's, let's look at these two and see if we can come up with a way to, to transform one into the other. So what we're looking for is, if I'm given a Thevenin circuit, can I transform it and come up with an, uh, an equivalent Norton circuit? Well, if they're going to be equal, that means they need to behave the same way for any value that I attach out here. So if I'm attaching resistors out on the ends of these two circuits, these two circuits really should behave the same way. All right, so let's use that as our, as, our, as our key to figuring out what's going on. Now, if you look at this circuit, then we see that uh, they should behave the same for any two, any, any resistor I attach to it. So let's, for fun, attach a short circuit. Let's short this guy out. Now, if I short the Thevenin source out, the, seven, the Thevenin circuit out, and I short the Norton source out, I should expect the same current to flow in both sides if they're going to be equivalent to each other. So over here on the Thevenin side, what is this I short circuit? Well, I short circuit is going to be V Thevenin over R Thevenin. And that's going to be the current that flows. And then on this side, what current? Well, this current over here, this I short circuit, should be I short circuit should be V Thevenin over R Thevenin as well. But we also see, since it's a short, that the I short circuit current is really going to be the same as the Norton current. And that's one of our first relationships, is that I short circuit is V Thevenin over R Thevenin, and that's going to equal I Norton. So if I am given V Thevenin and R Thevenin 
I can now find I Norton, which is the short circuit current. V7 into R7 will be I Norton. Okay, so now let's go and kind of do it the other way. Let's open our load back up. So if the load on the Thevenin circuit is opened, then there's a V open circuit, and we can look at the Thevenin circuit, and we can see that the V open circuit obviously has to equal VTH because when the circuit is open, there is no current. So that's a zero current flowing. So there's, there's zero drop across the Thevenin resistor. So VOC must equal V Thevenin. Well, if I open the Thevenin equivalent circuit, then I can open the Norton circuit, and I expect to see VOC appear over here. Well, looking at the Norton circuit, I see that VOC, if the Norton circuit is open, then all of the Norton current will flow through the Norton resistance, and I see that VOC is IN RN. And then if you take these two relationships, and, and look at them and make, them, make everything line up, you discover that R Thevenin must equal R Norton. So if I choose V open circuit equals I Norton, R Norton, R Thevenin equals R Norton, and I short circuit equals I Norton equals V Thevenin over R Thevenin, with these three relationships, you can now convert a Thevenin equivalent circuit into an equivalent Norton circuit, and you can also go back the other direction. So given a Thevenin circuit, you can create a Norton circuit using these relationships in the bottom page. Let's put them into an example. Now, these particular circuits like this don't always crop up. You gotta have, they only work out really well when they're of a certain form, but this is, so this is a very simplistic case, and you won't see these terribly often in practice, but sometimes they do show up, but I think it does prevent, does give some insight. So here we have a, a circuit that we're given, and if you look at this circuit, you'll see that if we were to draw a line right through here, that the circuit to the left hand side of my dashed line, that's a Norton equivalent circuit. Well, there exists a Thevenin equivalent circuit that we can stick on the left hand side of the line. And of course over here is all the same. This is all going to be the same that we already had. So this is going to be 4 ohms, and this is 9 ohms, and this is 2 ohms, and there's where the A is, and there's the B. But on the left hand side, we can take the circuit, the this Norton circuit, and we can come up with an equivalent Thevenin. Now how do we do that? Well, remember that the Thevenin and Norton resistor values are the same, so if there is a 12 ohm Norton resistance, then I expect to see a 12 ohm Thevenin resistance, and then if I take 9 amps and 12 ohms, which is 108 volts, then this Norton source will be the same as a 108 volt Thevenin source. If you go back to the previous page, we see that VOC is I Norton, R Norton, and that has to equal uh, V Thevenin. And so I Norton, R Norton, I, the uh, Norton current times the Norton resistance will give you the Thevenin voltage. So this is now the circuit we have. And if you look at this result, you can see that any current that flows through the Thevenin equivalent source also flows through the 2 ohm resistor and also must flow through the 4 ohm resistor. So any current that flows through the Thevenin resistance flows through the 2 ohms and also flows through the 4 ohms, which means the Thevenin resistance 12, the 2, and the 4 are all in series, and so 12 ohms in series with 2 in series with 4 is going to give you 18 ohms. And so you can take these three resistors and combine them into a single 18 ohm resistor. So here it is again. We can see the 12 ohm resistor was here, and here's the 108 
volts, and so that current must flow all the way through there. These three guys are all in series, and so the circuit here can be redrawn, and it's 108 volts, and in this case it's going to be 18 ohms, and then the rest of the circuit remains the same, so there's where the 9 goes back in, and this goes out to A, and this goes out to B. Now, you take this circuit, and then you look at it, and you draw a line at this point, you say, well, the circuit to the left of this dashed line is a Thevenin equivalent, and We'll redraw that line here. To the left is a Thevenin equivalent, which means I can represent that as a Norton. So now we're going to look for taking the circuit on the left of the yellow, on the left of the, the green line, and create an equivalent Norton source to go in its place. And the same as before, I know that the Norton resistance in this case is 18 ohms, which must be this, excuse me, the Thevenin resistance in this case is 18 ohms which means this one must be 18 ohms. And then how do I get the current here? Well, the Norton current is going to be the Thevenin voltage divided by the Thevenin resistance all right, to get the short circuit, and that's going to be 108 volts divided by 18 ohms. And you do that, and you'll get 6 amperes. So I get if I have a 6 amp source and an 18 ohm resistor in parallel, that acts the same as everything on this side. And this is the circuit we have. And obviously we can see that the 18 and the 9 are in parallel. And 18 parallel 9 is going to be 6 ohms. So I can replace the parallel combination of 18 and 9 with a 6 ohm resistor. And so at this point we've made it down to here and we have 6 amps and 18 parallel 9 is uh, 6 ohms and then we can do a source transformation one more time the 6 ohm Norton resistance becomes a 6 ohm Thevenin resistance and if I have 6 amps directed into 6 ohms then if I get 36 volts then these two sources this Norton source is going to be equivalent to this Thevenin source now remember how we started all this is we started with this circuit. And so what we did is we did source transformations working in this direction and kept collapsing Norton to Thevenin, Thevenin and the Norton and keep combining things until we get these two circuits. And if you actually go back and try to find the Thevenin equivalent uh, source for the original circuit and the Norton equivalent source for this circuit, you will indeed find this is the Norton source that you get and this is the Thevenin. So it's a different way of finding Norton and Thevenin by basically doing source transformation. So all these concepts are interrelated. Norton, uh, equivalent, the Norton theorem is a very powerful theorem, just like the Thevenin. It allows you to take an arbitrarily complicated network and represent it by a single current source in parallel with the resistor. That's the dual of Thevenin, which is a single voltage source in series with the resistor. And source transformation is the concept that basically a Norton source and a Thevenin source can also be made equivalent to each other and you can basically represent either, you can just interchange them and transform from one to the next. Thanks for listening.